Hello everyone, welcome to the video. In this video, we'll be talking about project requirements. So when designing a system, the first thing we should have in mind is what's the goal of the system? What are we trying to accomplish? And as developers, we often miss the forest for the trees and go straight into like design patterns, architecture patterns, like all the cool buzzwords, CQRS, DDD, whatever, 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 uh, every like new thing on the block. But at the end of the day, we tend to forget that we write software to solve problems or to help people or to improve things. And, but at the end of the day, there's a goal and the software is that we, we write the software to achieve that goal. With that in mind, functional requirements of the system. So, you know, you, you have to build a system. You need to gather the requirements from the client, or in this case, I'm the client, so I'm the client and the developer of the system. We need to sit down with the client and deeply understand what he's trying to accomplish or what they are trying to accomplish. And with that, their goals in mind, they will give us, or we will work together to come up with requirements. And these requirements are there to achieve that goal, right? So they are, you can think of them as implementations of how the client thinks with his domain knowledge, how he thinks he'll arrive to that goal. And this can be, so depending on who your client is, it can be an effective process or not. So for example, if your client is also the, the end user of the system, then you probably have a high probability of it being like that the requirements being good because he knows what the domain is and he knows how he should use the software to achieve that goal. But in many cases, when you're developing software, your client or the person you're working with to develop the software is not necessarily the end, the end user. So for example, uh, you're working with a business that, that is like a business to customers, right? So their business, they offer products to their customers and you're helping that business for software for their customers. So there's kind of an indirection. And when you're gathering requirements with that business, you're going off of what the business thinks is best for their customers. Sometimes, you know, so it's kind of like uh, you're playing telephone a little bit and you, you, you know, you might be going astray and that, that process is a little bit uh, different and you might have to be more of a fiduciary for your client as well. So you're actually, they're bouncing their ideas off of you and you're working together, trying to understand the problem better, try to learn about the domain and uh, to, to get a better idea of what the, the good solution is. So I've been throwing this word around domain and uh, this has been a, a like more up and coming pattern of thinking is domain driven design where we want to deeply understand the, the domain of the problem. So that if you're not familiar with the term domain, but basically we want the whole team. So the developers, the testers, the product managers, the clients all to be on the same page of what the problem is, what the, the real world uh, problems are like the domain. So that's the domain, the real world, what you're trying to solve in software, what does it correspond to in the real world and if everybody's on the same page of what the real pro the problem is in the real world, we implement the code so it reflects the real world and it helps the developers make better solutions for that real world problem and it helps everybody be on the same page when you go to solve the problem. So that's kind of the crux of why you want to be domain driven. Uh, but obviously there's a thousand ways to implement this and you know, you can read uh, Scott Vlashen's book, The Domain Modeling Main Functional. And uh, he go kind of goes into event storming and sitting down with the team, asking good questions and modeling out what the domain is with domain events and the commands and stuff. But uh, I, I feel that it could be overkill for certain situations. So for example, if your system was just one function, like one like F sharp function, it'd be massively overkill to just, you know, brainstorm of domain events, uh, blah, 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 all that stuff. So it, so that's like too minimal. And let's say your system was like Netflix, then you probably would want to write it down on a piece, like an, on a napkin at a restaurant. You would just want to squiggle on a little napkin. So maybe like for bigger systems, like that heavy brainstorming event storming session can be very good. And for smaller things, 
you know, maybe your tool can be downsized or your, your methodology can be downsized. Don't, don't make this complex uh, system to model domain. And you can argue that it's not complex to event storming or, or domain modeling via events. But for me, what I like, how I like to design is I start with the interface. So I look at how the user is going to use the software and then I can map out what are the functions or the, the calls that I need to implement. So uh, we'll, we'll go more into depth about this. But uh, I actually, I opened up a parenthesis about design when I probably shouldn't have. We're still talking about requirements. And before I jump into the requirements and the goals we're going to set out for this project, I want to talk about non-functional requirements. So non-functional requirements can be thought of requirements that the user doesn't like necessarily need. So, you know, if he wants to sell pizzas, uh, a, func a functional requirement is the ability to add toppings uh, on the pizza or something like that. That's like a functional requirement to solve that business need. But a non-functional requirement is, well, you know, what's the scale of the user base? So are there a million people ordering pizzas a day or there's just like only two? And depending on like the scale the, 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 the technicalities of the implementation, you'll have to require certain things. And so these are non-functional requirements because it's not necessarily related to the domain, but it is related to the, the software, right? So don't need to understand too depth in that. So let's go into what are the goals of the system and what are the requirements for, for our stock market system. All right, so what am I trying to achieve with this stock market monitoring system? Like, why am I, why, why do I want to monitor the stock market? Well, I want to, so, you know, we all work for a living and we make money. And with that money that we're not using, it's a good idea to invest it or to manage it in such a way that it gains value over time, right? So money is a, is a resource. And depending on how you manage your resources, then you can possibly make passive income, right? That's kind of the idea with investing. And what I want for my system is I want to reduce the time I spend looking where I should invest my money, right? So this is kind of a, a time is saving application. So I just want to get analysis done automatically. And I get like the, the summary, I guess, or the summary of what my, what I define to be a, a strategy to analyze stocks with or, or securities, which we're going to go into like the lingo of the stock market. Uh, but yeah, so at the end of the day, I want to save money and for the positions that I hold. So we'll get into what all these words mean, obviously. So for the positions I hold, I also want to know uh, if it's a good time to sell, right? So I don't want to be like always checking my portfolio. I just want to get like notifications based on a strategy that I define uh, if it's a good idea to sell uh, or not, or when I should sell if maybe there's an impending crash or something like that. So these are like the overarching goals of the system. And what I believe to be the solution is to have a monitoring uh, system, which uh, will send me notifications. I can go on a website and check out uh, what are the most or the uh, what I deem to be uh, good options to invest in or like good companies to invest in at the time based again on a strategy that I define. So this I feel is the best way to come to that goal. So now they have, we, we have the goals out of the way. How do I believe that I will best come to that, uh, that, that goal of saving time? Well, like I said, I want to based on uh, a bunch of stocks that either I select or I can just scan. Ideally, I scan all the stocks on like the NYSE, the NASDAQ and, and whatever, but we'll see if that uh, is technically feasible via our API. Our, our, our trading API. Uh, I want to basically for every stock that's monitored, I want to be able to calculate uh, an indicator. So uh, this would be a, a technical indicator, the uh, technical analysis. Uh, and I want for each stock to maybe have some fundamental data. So some fundamental analysis, I want to be able to, you know, maybe see the earnings per share and uh, whatever. So we'll, we'll get to more into that. And I want to be able to define what a strategy based on these indicators 
to see like if all the good educators I'm looking at are in a good spot, then I want to flag this stock as maybe a good opportunity to purchase. So that's the goal of that. And uh, for selling, it's a bit of the same idea. So on all the, the positions I'm holding, I want to uh, predefine a strategy based on indicators and fundamental ratios. Uh, I want to define if I should sell at this point, maybe it's overbought and I just want to make sure I sell before it goes down or, or stuff like that. And I also want to get notified when it's time to sell. So not only I want that information on the website, I want it to send to me via uh, any means, maybe like a messenger bot or a text message or an email or something like that. And lastly, as a, maybe a second phase, I want to be able to back test my strategies based on historical data. So I want to, uh, based on the strategy I define, I want to be able to uh, see if it's a viable strategy based on historical data uh, in the past. So that will allow me to figure out if it's maybe it might be a good idea or not, or a good strategy or not. Also, I want to be add, uh, I want to be able to add indicators over time. So I don't want the, the system to be uh, like modular. And obviously not from the interface, I'm going to be able to add indicators because I need to write the code for them, obviously. But I don't want to, uh, I want to be like, when I write, uh, when I, uh, as a developer, or as the client, I want to be able to ask the developer, hey, I want the, this uh, new indicator added. I want that to be possible. So these are the main requirements of my system. Now we went over a lot of terms and I think it's important that uh, I probably explain some of these terms because not, not everyone has the domain knowledge of, of the stock market. So let's go over a few things that I said. So I said I wanted to uh, analyze stocks and for me to buy securities. I said the word security. So what is a security? A, sec a security is a, basically a financial asset that can be bought or sold. So you can think of stocks or securities. Options are securities. So options are uh, securities that you can, you have the right to, but not the obligation to buy or sell. Uh, a bit complicated, it's gonna be out of scope for, for this uh, project because I'm gonna basically gonna be analyzing companies and I'm gonna be, uh, we're not going to be initiating uh, purchases of securities. So we're only going to be analyzing the companies basically or ETFs. Uh, so that means, um, that means options are not really important for what we're trying to accomplish. Okay, so that's a security. Another type of security is a bond. So a bond is a type of loan, basically. So you're, you're, you're loaning out money and you, you, you want to get paid back uh, the interest on, on that loan, basically, is, a, is kind of how we can think about it. Um, I also went over the term position. So what's a position? So a position is having a, it's having a position in the market, which means it's currently having, having a, an ownership of some stocks. Right, so either you can have long positions or short positions. So a long position is you bought a stock, you, you're holding shares of stock. So that's a position in the market. And a short position is you're currently borrowing, borrowing a stock from somebody to sell it later. So that's short selling, uh, but you're basically holding on to shares that you currently have to, to sell. And uh, so basically, uh, you'd be sh uh, on a short position if you believe the security is going to, the, the price, the security's price is going to go down, right? Uh, okay, so that's long, short. Uh, so another, uh, so having an open position, so that, that means that you, you currently have a, a position open, so you're currently in the market, and uh, closing a position is basically making sure that uh, you, you uh, either sell your long position or you buy your short position, uh, basically. But I don't think we're gonna be looking at uh, shorts at all. Uh, we might add as an indicator, uh, just because of the GME madness, we might just add as an indicator a uh, short interest. So just checking if, if the stock is overshorted or not, that might be a good idea and kind of a meme, uh, just, just propelling the meme a little bit more. Um, so yeah, other terms I mentioned. So what is an indicator? So in, a t in the context I'm using it, there's basically a few ways you can analyze uh, stocks or securities. There's, and, and obviously there's probably more ways, but uh, from the two I'm referring to, uh, there's technical analysis and fundamental analysis. And technical analysis, what it means is 
you're analyzing the movement of the stock price, but not necessarily the underlying asset. So it means, you know, a bunch of these indicators are looking just at the stock price or just at maybe the volume or uh, the, the parameters of the stock itself, but not the underlying company. So we don't actually care if the company's doing well or not. We just care how is the price moving? Is it like selling a lot more that it's being bought or stuff like that? Is there's a lot of volume? So volume is uh, how many people are purchasing that stock or selling that stock at a point in time or how many trades are being executed basically. Um, so that's another term, volume. And uh, yeah, so these indicators are called tech, uh, are, are doing technical analysis and they don't really keep in mind how good the company is doing. So on its own, it's is a pretty like it's it's not seen as a necessarily good thing. It's good to incorporate it or not or something. Uh, and keep in mind, I'm not an expert like I'm, I'm not I'm sitting here. I know all these terms, but I'm not I know these domain terms, but I don't uh, I'm not a master in the financial markets or something like that. So. Uh, anything that I say should not be taken directly. You should, uh, you know, do your own research. But at the end of the day, uh, yeah, they're just terms I'm, I'm pulling out here. So, and so that's technical analysis. And then fundamental, uh, fundamental analysis is analyzing the underlying uh, company, like this, the company's fundamentals, which are is their financials. So you can like uh, earnings per share, if they're in debt or not, what's their revenue and, and stuff like that. Uh, this is like where I'm really weak because I don't have a, I don't really have a like finance. Uh, I don't I haven't really studied finance or, or companies like that. So that I'll probably defer to either some friends or the internet or stuff like that. But the goal of this project is not necessarily to, uh, uh, I, I don't know like what's a great strategy or not. I'm just trying to build a system and then off camera, uh, I'm going to be, you know, probably working with some friends, doing some stuff so I can, uh, have the system for for myself <sighs> but uh yeah so um, we're basically building a system and we might do like some simple strategies but i i cannot guarantee that you'll make any money because i don't know yeah i think we covered most of the lingo so this video was just to to have in mind what's the goal and the requirements and how i go about it um most of the time if i'm working with an actual client we're going to be sitting down really i i ask a lot of questions really uh, digging like socratically uh, why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? And trying to get a great idea of what the domain is and what the problem is and how they believe they're going to solve the problem and why. And you basically, as a developer, if you're, if you're designing a system, you should have a good idea of what the real world problem is and how, how the, the, the client or the, the person who's solving the problem, how they believe they're going to solve the problem. Uh, because at the end of the day, you want this, the software to reflect the real world, right? You're making a model. It's domain modeling. And a model is a representation of something. So you want to represent that something very well if you want your software to be good. So that was the point of this video. In the next video, we'll be designing the architecture and uh, going how, how I like to design the architecture. I kind of teased it a little bit. Uh, I like to work like top down. Uh, so working on the interfaces, how the software is going to be consumed and uh, working from there and what I need in the back end, like my back, my idea of the back end should serve uh, the front facing applications, whether it's a REST API or a web app. So, yeah. Um, yeah, the next video we'll go off the, the architecture and uh, that's how it's going to go. So. If you enjoyed the video, uh, like would be very good. Comment if you have any, uh, there's probably gonna be some the debates over some things I said. So uh, I'd like to hear what you think about it or if you want any suggestions for videos and uh, make sure to subscribe because this series is gonna be very, very cool. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in that next video. Peace.